are times when I look back in my life as a reseller, I'm just like, dude, what the? You're crazy. You're crazy. From 15 billion in 2000 to 64 billion in 2024. Early on, I started to see how the resale industry was starting to shift and things were starting to boom. In this video, I want to talk about how I built an award winning vintage store in a world where everybody was going to online selling. I ran away from online selling. I opened up a physical brick and mortar vintage store specializing in mid century modern furniture. <laughs> Hi there, I am Eric. I'm the founder and the owner of BC Modern. We are an award-winning vintage store in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Uh, today, in this video, I wanna take you on the journey. Kind of starts with a small idea that's grown to something that I didn't even imagine it ever becoming. I'm gonna rewind it back to the early 2000s. Now, in the early 2000s, I mean, almost everybody was uh, reselling online. And I should say reselling. I should say most people were reselling online. They were moving away from having physical storefronts because the idea of being able to sell online without having all the overhead that comes with the store was a very popular idea, which is still very popular to this day. But eBay, Etsy, Poshmark, these things were uh, very popular. I should say Pop Poshmark, probably not back then, but um, eBay, Etsy, those things were definitely uh, very popular in the early 2000s. And I was no different. I was in the thick of it, reselling on these platforms. eBay, we're running 100 to 200 auctions every single week on that platform. And I tell you, like, it was it was really intense, uh, the amount of work that went into uh, keeping an online business going in the early 2000s. 2004, five, somewhere around there, I decided to become an auctioneer. And that increased the amount of stuff that I was seeing on a monthly basis because the auctions were 400 to 600 lots every single time that we ran these auctions. So you add that on top of the eBay stuff and it was just really, really intense um, early introduction to uh, reselling for myself. At times, the volume was just absolutely staggering and um, exhausting. I can't even say it wasn't. It was. Uh, it was exhausting. It just was. It was a lot of work. Now, what I got to say though, online gave me like such invaluable lessons um, just from the sheer volume of stuff that I was selling on there. And then just having to run an online business, you're dealing with the customer service, you're shipping, you're doing returns, you're dealing with packaging, you're dealing with shipping supplies, like just everything that went along with the online business. So many lessons were learned with the online business, but there was something missing. There was really something missing it was the personal connection. It's like, I'm selling hundreds of items every single week, but there's no personal connection with anybody that I'm buying, selling this stuff to. And don't get me wrong. Some people may be like, you know what? I don't need to have any personal connection with people just hit buy it now and buy my order. And and that's, I get it, that, that could be your cup of tea. But for myself, it started to feel very empty. When you're selling, again, at this point, thousands of items every single month between the live auctions and our eBay business um, and Etsy, uh, it just, it, the volume, again, was staggering for me not to get something more out of it than just making a dollar off of it. What I found happened, I started to get burned out. There wasn't anything that was providing me fulfillment. I was missing building a community around what it is that I was selling. That took me some time to really figure out that that's what the issue was. I really needed to figure out how to find a passion in reselling. I needed to find a passion so that it didn't feel like just another monotonous career that I picked. I mean, I left a cubicle that was monotonous to try this full time. So I should definitely make sure that um, I'm going to figure out how to do this long term and how to enjoy it long term. And I just I started to look and I'm like, OK, my passions keep leading me back to mid-century modern design, mid-century modern furniture, the 50s, the 60s, the 70s. And when I say it's leading me to, like the path is leading me there. At this time now, by this time, we, we're, we're, we're not only doing eBay, we're doing live auctions. We actually own a pawn shop. Yeah, I'm just, at times when I look back in my life as a reseller, I'm just like, dude, what the, you're crazy, you're crazy. But yes, we owned a pawn shop at this time, but, 
this pivotal, it was a very pivotal point because like I said, I was starting to look and see that my passions were showing. And inside the pawn shop, it was all kind of mid-century modern stuff. I got knoll, um, coffee tables. I got fiberglass chairs and tulip tables. And I started to see that my passion was coming clear and I was ignoring it basically, like by trying to do any and everything for money. Like we closed the pawn shop, the pawn shop fell. It was a pivotal point. It gave me like a reset. It gave me a chance where I was like, you know what? Maybe it is time for me to follow my passion. I got about, 10 years in at this point and i've done several different things in the resale industry and nothing seems to be bringing me enjoyment at this point you know i was faced with some challenges the challenges of transitioning from a failing business it was it was scary and and, and i can i can't say it wasn't scary starting from scratch with a new concept an unproven concept coming off a business that did not work out but i gotta say like something something there's something special about like uncharted territory you know? like, at least that's for me like i like it, gi it gives you it gives you a chance to find a new path it gives you a chance to find your own unique path so i decide to take the plunge i take the plunge i find another storefront and this one isn't as big of a storefront i went from you know almost four thousand square feet of two floors uh no actually three floors there because we have the we have the basement too Man, a pawn shop was huge, but I went from, you know, a three floor pawn shop to a 700 square foot office space with windows. It was not even, it was nowhere near a retail space. It was enough for me to have a couple pieces of furniture in there. I had some shelves in there with a couple of small knickknacky type things in there. Still hadn't refined what I was really into. I just knew that this was a certain direction I wanted to go and I needed a place to make that direction um, at least start, right? Take the first step for that direction. The space wasn't glamorous, but it was clean and it was nice and it was close to home. And on top of that, it actually had a basement where I was allowed, I could do my, I could run my eBay operation from the basement. So I still had some kind of uh, safety net behind me with trying this new concept. I, I will walk away and come back from eBay probably my entire life at this point, because it's something that I learned how to do very early on as a reseller. And I learned how to do it very well. When you can do, you know, 100 to 200 auctions every single week, um, you know, finding the items, selling the items, shipping the items, dealing with the issues like those are things that you'll never really forget. So I, I knew having a space for me to do eBay in this new concept was still going to be very instrumental. And that's what this new this with this. That's what this new small uh, you know, 700 square foot storefront or office, I should say, office storefront uh, provided me. That space was really instrumental in this entire process of getting from there to where we're at right now. That space allowed me to test this idea that I had without the burden of a very expensive lease. Like I think that space cost me 700 bucks where the pawn shop was, I think we were at 22, 22, 2400, somewhere around there is what we were paying for the pawn shop. You know, so this space allowed me to, again, try this concept, unproven concept, just like the pawn shop was an unproven concept, but try it at a much more manageable overhead cost. Within six months, we all grew that space and it was time to move. And what I did is I decided to move into a warehouse space this time. And so we moved, we, we found a warehouse space in the Walker's Point neighborhood of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Moving to a larger space definitely sounds like a dream. And it was um, a dream, especially you know, again, this is an unproven concept. So I'm like six months in, I'm like, man, we're moving to a new space already. Okay, I, I think I might got something, you know? This moving to a new space, it comes with its own set of challenges. You know, obviously bills, you know, overhead goes up. Walker's Point was not the trendy spot that it is today. It wasn't as established as it is today. And it's pretty cool to say that I was part of what helped uh, you know, attract businesses down there and help make it what it is today, even though I'm no longer there. I took another risk. I took another risk with this space in Walker's Point because this was not your typical storefront again. Now, my pawn shop had floor to ceiling windows. I think we had 10 windows in the front of the building. There was no privacy 
pretty much. We built a wall so that you couldn't see past the showroom. Literally, the window showed everything. My warehouse, my new space. Now, mind you, the one that I had before this only had a couple windows, small office type space. This space, this was a brick warehouse. It had two garage doors and one small window. We put our name on the one window. This, it, it wasn't flashy. This building was not flashy at all. It, there, there was nothing flashy about it. I knew that it gave me the space to create the magic that I needed to create on the inside. I didn't need all the windows. I, I didn't need all of that. I just needed my phone. I just needed social media. That's literally all I needed was to be able to take photographs and videos of what I have and get it distributed online. My focus became less on the physical appearance of the building and more on the operations of growing the business. You know, that comes with, that came with its own challenges because now I have to figure out how do I continuously source to feed this demand that I'm, this growing demand that I'm building. This is where my background in it as an auctioneer came in handy because I have connections, I had connections, but the difference is now I'm not looking for any and everything. I'm looking for very specific, unique items. So although I can get into homes and people know, hey, call Eric, he, he buys vintage stuff and I got ads out there for buying antiques and buying entire estates and collections. Now I'm only looking for very specific thing to keep my store fresh and appealing every single weekend. We're open every weekend at this point. Never, and it never has been about just finding the items. That's that's never, like finding the items is the least of my worries. It started with, it, it was about cu like curating an identity. What do I want? What, is I, what do I want BC Modern to say? What do I want people to feel about BC Modern? How do I want it to look? These are questions that I had in my head. These are questions that I was constantly trying to answer and making decisions as I'm buying things along the way to make sure that I'm kind of trying to tell a story about myself uh, in this business, in the branding of the business. And that, you know, that that's that's like, you know, that's like weight loss, right? It doesn't happen overnight. You take steps every day to make your transformation happen, right? When I first started, it had such a very warehousey type feel. It was like, how much stuff can I fit in here? Um, with making sure that it still looks neat and organized and curated by colors and designs and makers and things of that nature. But by the time we started really get to, you know, we got to rolling in the warehouse space, our style, it became, it, it started to evolve with time. So what do I do? I open up a second location, open up a second location. And this location was opened with the intention of now Let's try to start styling these items. Let's try to start staging these items so people can see what it would actually look like in their home. Now, you know I got a warehouse. You know I can fill this place up full of stuff and you can have a ton of options to come shop. But now I am want to create an identity that coincides with the BC Modern brand that when you think of BC Modern, you think of, hey, this, this shop actually shows you what it's gonna look like in your house. They actually have, uh, you know, style. They actually have uh, swag where they 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 know how to they know how to make it look the part. They pull items from all over the world, marry them together, and make it look like they're in happy matrimony. That second location was a turning point. We really started to develop a distinct style. It was like this mid-century modern design with elements of hip hop and culture infused into it to create like this shop that just had vintage nostalgia vibes throughout. Every piece that came in through the door, I literally touched myself. Every piece was hand curated by my, by me to make sure that it stayed true to, you know, what the, you know, the direction that I was trying to go with the brand. From the colors that we use to uh, put the logos on the windows. Oh, I forgot to tell you my second location. I went back to windows. I, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I want my second location. You to be able to see what you, you, you can see all this stuff stage. We still had the warehouse. So I still had that vibe going, but I, this, this location was a corner spot windows on both windows, both sides, or, you know, windows across the front window down one side. So you can actually see in this space. So from the colors we used to put the logos on the windows, every, you know, there was 10 windows, five windows had our logos on it in different colors to the music we played. Like everything we started to do was done with the intention of 
creating a sense of nostalgia, a sense of happiness, a sense of style, a sense of swag. It was no longer just a storefront. It was becoming a brand and it was becoming a vibe in itself. Plus, it was like a community hub. Like people were coming in every weekend and see and see their friends and see me. Like it was becoming a meeting spot uh, in the area. It all started to work. We started getting like local attention. You know, we were winning best best furniture store, best vintage store. We're getting runner up in this, runner up in that. Like we're getting a lot of local attention. And then COVID hits and changes everything for everybody. And for myself, I, you know, I wasn't immune to that. You know, we had to make some very tough decisions, not just with BC Modern, with other businesses that we had going. So we decided to focus heavy, heavy, heavy on a new concept for BC Modern because we saw that we had traction prior to COVID, but we knew that the movement of people would forever be changed. So it's like, how do we uh, change with this new world? We moved to our third location. No, We closed down the warehouse and now we only have one central location. Now this location was the biggest BC Modern location I ever had. And when I went into this location, I went in with the intentions of when I leave here, I'm buying a building. Because at this point now, Walker's Point is, is becoming this trendy popping area and my rent is going up, 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 up. And I know that the direction I wanna go with this, for this to stay sustainable, I have to reduce my overhead costs. But that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother video that we could talk about. Now we're in our third spot. And not only are we getting local, attention. We're getting regional attention like Domino Magazine, Apartment Therapy, um, Midwest Living. Like there's, 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 there's like local, there's like regional company, national companies reaching out to BC Modern to be featured. Started to, it's, you know, it's, it's like everything just, everything started to click. And it really like the culmination for myself personally was I was in New York Times. Like they took quotes from me. They called me to put you know, my two cents in New York Times. And it all, be, it's all because I tried this little witty concept. It's beyond humbling to understand and go back to the roots, even as I'm talking about it in this video, to go back to the roots of how this even started, um, to think about all the ideas that me and my wife have just jotted down on like napkins and they we, we put them into play. You know what I mean? Like uh, to, 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 to think about all that kind of stuff and then to say in this same video i was in new york times like my words are in new york times because uh a store that i started is absolutely insane here's the thing though you know it's not really it's not really the accolades that you do this kind of stuff for at least not myself it, you know it, it, i have to always go back to why did i start this why did i want to do this and I think if I, you know, understanding those things is one of the main pieces that allows me to stay successful. I did this because I wanted to connect with people. And as long as I make sure that every decision that I make allows me to continuously connect with people, uh, I think the business will be good. I think the business will continue to grow. By understanding what the community that I built around BC Modern enjoys, I love all things vintage. So. I just have to figure out what the community wants um, that they're 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 more than welcoming for me to talk about and more than welcoming me for to bring it to the shop. I try to find pieces and curate the space to bring nostalgia and joy to the people that are part of my BC Modern community. After COVID, we shifted our business model to a once a month concept. So we used to be open every weekend, and then once a month we would have an end of the month sale. We switched that, we switched it to, you can only shop two days a month. So we're open two days a month. It's the last full weekend of every month. We're open, it's 30 days. It's basically 30 days of curation for two days of selling. And we see between, you know, 500 to 700 people, 300 on a very slow weekend, but it usually averages about 500 to 700 people in the two days. That's the only time you can shop BC Modern at this point. That's the only time you can get our inventory. You can't buy online. You can't buy from Facebook. You can't buy from Instagram. 
that's the model. You know, I got to say BC Modern has been my most challenging uh, thing that I've built in business and it's my most successful thing. So I'm, I'm very proud of it too. It taught me that, it really taught me that the path to success isn't a straight path. You know, there's going to be a lots of turns. There's going to be ups and downs. Uh, there's going to be lots of roadblocks and hazards that, you know, are going to get in your way and you're going to fail. You're going to fail a lot of times. Probably there's just, you can't get away from failure to succeed. That's just part of the game. But for myself, the challenges that I've had to go through and I'm still overcoming to this day have made this journey absolutely worthwhile. They force me to grow. They force me to adapt. They force me to ultimately find something that I'm very passionate about that I will enjoy doing the rest of my life. Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming on this journey with me. I have, I have one thing that I would love for you to take from this video is that passion and perseverance can take the smallest idea and turn it into something extraordinary. Or if you're ever in Milwaukee and you're passing through um, it's the last weekend of the month. You got to stop in and see BC Modern. You can follow us on social too, BC Modern on uh, all platforms. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you.